Hello, today we're going to examine this Aetzer P20 plus 20 watt laser's ability to etch steel. Then we'll put it to work making a Cthulhu themed knife designed for me by AI. Now, Cthulhu, what it do? Well, at the age of three, Howard Philip Lovecraft's father was committed to a mental hospital where he died. So HP's grandfather encouraged the literate three-year-old to read English poetry and told the toddler HP stories of winged horrors while making deep low moaning sounds. Curiously, in high school, HP suffered several mental breakdowns. Then his mother was also committed to an institution. Despite these setbacks, HP Lovecraft would go on to write very normal, uplifting, life-affirming stories like the one about the insanity-inducing Cthulhu depicted here or here. Encouraged by the octopus-like nature of Cthulhu, but artistically inept, I've asked Dolly 2 artificial intelligence to generate plans for a Cthulhu-themed knife. And it took a while, but I think we got there. This is it. This is the knife that Dolly 2 drew up for me, the Cthulhu blade. And it looks pretty cool. It actually took quite a few attempts with different wording uh, and, and stuff and inputs to make it draw something that even halfway made sense. And if you look closely here, this doesn't really quite add up, right? <laughs> I think this is the Cthulhu here, this sort of thing. At least that's what I'm going to play on. And then um, this handle, you know, there's no there's no depth to it. There's no width to it. It's just a slim piece of single steel I think there's no there's no depth and then there's no place for your finger up here it butts right up against the blade so that that can't possibly work and then uh, you know there's some sort of cladding here on the side of the the base of the blade around the the heel and uh, I don't know how it meets up with the blade here there's no this doesn't quite make sense you know the everything's off here <laughs> and then I don't know why there's a break in the pattern up here or what this long narrow thing is here is it part of this sort of uh, copper cladding or whatever this is here or is it something else at any rate nothing quite meets up the way it should it's just, like a lot of stuff that the AI uh, programs generate this is more like a fever dream than an actual schematic or plan to make something it's, it's an impression of something and it looks cool but when you take a close look nothing really adds up <laughs> Nothing meets up. It's not an actual object in physical space as we know it. So it's going to take some um, kajiggering. All right, let's head on over to knifeprint.com. We'll try to draw up something resembling our AI's design. Again, we're going to have to make some changes so we have a functional knife. Knifeprint will water jet these out of my chosen steel and ship them to me. So that's very cool. Check a link in the description if you want more info on that. Yeah, they came in the mail. I got two of them just in case I mess one up. But I don't really mess things up here, so... At any rate, I had it accidentally cut out of a uh, preliminary version of my draft instead of the final version. That's on me. But uh, I think with a little touching up of the tip area, it's going to look just fine. So, Our main task today is to fabricate our Cthulhu piece. I think the AI intends this little blurb in the handle here to be our Cthulhu. I, I know a Cthulhu is humanoid with wings and mountain-like, but I'm a slave to our AI design. So uh, we're just going to press ahead with what we got to work with. I went to knife print and drew the contour of the Cthulhu over the original design. And then I sent that contour to an exceptionally gifted artist on Fiverr who in short order whipped up an incredible design. Shout out to Lucas GH 95. I highly recommend this guy. Super pro. And here's where our laser comes in. I've sent this Aetzer 20 watt P 20 plus laser to test out on metal. And it's a sweet bit of pew pew. As you guys know, I've made knives with the Afero five watt laser and a Falcon. Uh, 10 watt laser in the past seen here and as impressed as I was with the 10 watts ability to make deep marks and steal this Aetzer 20 watt is even better. It's a 20 watt dual diode laser that cuts 15 millimeter or 0.6 inch wood in one pass in 12 millimeter dark acrylic and can even do 0.3 millimeter steel according to the manufacturer. It has a built in focusing lever to gauge the laser height from the workpiece. that's pretty nice. So let's see if we can put a maker's mark on here now on some hardened carbon steel. Again, I've been using laser GRBL for all these projects. It's free and it seems to work okay. After about 30 minutes and two passes, we get a really nice relief here. You can see if we clean it up with some sandpaper, it looks really nice. It's clean, crisp, takes a fingernail. It's quite deep, a superior maker's mark indeed. I think it's a little deeper than I get with an electrochemical edge. Very nice. 
All right, we're going to load up our Cthulhu and see how it looks on some sheet metal with a quick pass. The definition is going to be good, but we have to etch deeper. And that's the question. Will the definition hold up with these really fine lines as we etch deeper? Might be a bit of a balancing act. I think the next step is to laser in an outline, uh, sort of do the head, and then maybe just outline the tail. And then we'll shape the piece of metal and go back and do the full etch. I think that's what we're going to try here. I've got some sandpaper set up here to help catch some deflecting laser beams, but you guys should really use a box with this 20 watt laser. Glasses, it may help your eyes, but they're not going to help your skin. I've gone over the outline with a marker because we're going to do some grinding and the edge is going to be a little bit hard to see. Let's get it cut out and shaped up. So from its home position, I had the laser outline and the Cthulhu on the sheet steel. And I'm going to put our steel back in place right on top of that and see if we can get it precisely where it needs to be. And then we'll load the full image and laser that on top of it. Check out this design I lasered up. I think another couple passes and it's going to be super deep. Really cool. You can see the possibilities. All right, so I went back and cleaned up the edges a little bit to make it conform to the pattern a little better. And when I did that, I just sort of took off the edge a little bit. I just sort of sanded over it. I did draw out these areas. These are hollow areas where there's, where there's no etching, sort of between the tentacles. And I might try to get at that, you know, with my power carver and hollow those areas out a little bit. All right, so this was looking pretty good. The recesses, you know, they actually quit lining up with my etching for some reason. So um, I don't know what happened. Then I lost part of a tentacle up here while I was cleaning up some of the sides. So I just went ahead and started over and I got much more uh, tentacle action up here. And I need to go in and, and power carve out those little empty spaces again. I think I'm gonna do that still. And there's some stuff to clean up back here. But uh, pretty nice etch there. So that goes right in here, something like that. I got some uh, copper here. It's remarkably heavy. It's thin, but it's still pretty heavy. That's just under an eighth of an inch. And I, I'm still working out in my brain where all it's going to go in here. You know, probably something like that. But how's it going to interact with the plunge line? I don't know. Ugh. I also bought a little LED light. I was going to drill into here, drill a little recess in there, run a wire back through here to a battery, and then fill this with some semi-clear, smoky resin, maybe blue and black or something, and have the light so you could turn it on and it would shine into the resin, but I don't know. I'm not sure that effect is going to be all that cool, and it'd be a miracle if I could pull that off. So at any rate, that's hanging out there in the wind. We'll have to pick all this up in the next video, you guys, so stay tuned. Bow, <laughs> bow,